Ocala's Information Station, 1370 WOCA. Ocala! All right, five minutes after 11 o'clock. You know, Monday kind of kicks off the uh, overindulging in... uh, Bad foods day <laughs> season, right? <laughs> right, because Monday was the day we, we eat all the Halloween candy that we're supposed to give out to the kids, right? Yeah. Uh, and then, of course, it goes whole. We always say this every year. Oh, look at this lady. She is really in good shape. Our Living Skinny in Fat Jeans is the title of the book. It's written by our guest, Dr. Felicia Stoller. Uh, the Healthy Way to Lose Weight and Feel Great. And by the way, the word genes is as in genetics, G E N E S. Uh, and uh, Dr. Stoller is known as America's health and wellness expert. She's a registered dietitian, a nutritionist, an exercise physiologist, the vice president of the Greater New York Chapter of the American College of Sports Medicine. Wow. And uh, we're honored to have her on our show this morning. Good morning, Dr. Stoller. How are you? I'm great. How are you? I'm great, but look at you in this sweater. That's a nice sweater. <laughs> Did you see this sweater, Rob? Look at that sweater on the back there. That's oh, I love that sweater. Yeah. That is beautiful. <laughs> Me too. It's good to practice what you preach, right? Yeah, that's right. <laughs> so have you ever had a weight issue at all? You look great. I actually did. Thank you. No, I did you have didn't. a weight issue. Yeah, I did. A slight weight issue when I was in my 20s. And how did you manage to uh, uh, get the um, everyday regimentation to like not eat the the wrong stuff and to do some kind of exercise? Well, what really happened was that I went to somebody with my exact credentials and she changed my life. And so then I decided at some point in time to become a dietitian and exercise physiologist. Oh my! Really? And so, how did yeah. how did she change your life? I mean, did she give you the right things to eat? It, well, it, she basically told me that the advice I was getting from the trainers at the gym was not correct. That it was okay to eat fat because that was back in the nineties when everything was like fat free. Yeah, yeah. And um, to ease up on my exercise a little bit, and I was one of those people that read every single diet in every magazine, and I realized that that wasn't working for me. So I changed my relationship with food and physical activity, and I lost the 20 pounds, and I never gained it back, other than when I was pregnant with my children, but I always lost the weight. Really? So, so are, are there any, is there anything you don't eat at all, and do you walk a lot? What, what, is, what is the relationship between your exercise and your food? Well, I just got out of hot yoga. <laughs> oh. Um, yeah. <laughs> so basically, I eat predominantly plant-based with small amounts of animal protein, and I try to do some physical activity every day. Okay. So, so whether it be working out at the gym, whether it be yoga, swimming, walking, getting up and moving throughout the day, you know, sitting has become the new smoking. So we need to really be up and moving around all the time. Oh, I like that. I, I got to remember that. Sitting has become the new smoking. Yeah. Because I sit too much. Do you and, th- you know, a lot, a lot of people are often surprised that they eat so many carbohydrates. But they really are the foundation of my diet and should be the foundation of most people's diets. As in bread, you mean? You eat a lot of bread? I eat a lot of grains. I eat bread. I eat pasta. I eat a lot of fruits and vegetables. You know, every time I see things about low-carb diets, they're filled with vegetables. And I'm thinking, that's carbs. Okay. uh, So, uh, you know, a couple weeks ago, I was in New York, and I I grew up in New York, and so I was with my son, and I wanted to show him. He's he's 30, by the way, so I wasn't wasn't with a little boy. And he wanted to uh, walk around the city, which was great. But, you know, I hadn't really been walking since I don't live there anymore. And in New York, you can walk a lot if you want to. Um... And I found after our, our, our like six days there that I really need to walk more because I really wasn't in shape to do all that walking. But but so I, I'm thinking I should walk more. But that's not enough, is it? Well, walking is important, but also doing resistance exercise. There's different reasons to do different types of exercise. So we look at strengthening our muscles. We're looking at. Um, st- we're looking at flexibility, you look at endurance, bone density, so doing a little bit of everything because it's use it or lose it. 
When, when you said you were mostly a plant-based diet and you had some animal protein, did, did, are you referring to eggs? Because I, you know, I used to do this thing, and I, I do eat meat now, but I used to do this thing where I didn't eat anything that died. And and I, eggs were okay because eggs don't die, right? Right. <laughs> yeah. Right. I, I don't well, know. some people see that as a byproduct, you know, where some people are lacto over where they'll do eggs and milk. Yeah, right. I used to do eggs, cheese, milk. Yeah. Yeah. No, I do a little bit of everything. I don't. There's really nothing I don't eat. It, really. Right. What's for yeah. lunch? What's for lunch today? Let me start there. <laughs> I haven't decided yet. <laughs> <laughs> I, I might I might do a, a kale Caesar salad. I know that sounds very cliche, but I really like that. No, they, that sounds like a good thing. So, and I'll probably crumble a hard-boiled egg on top. So do you buy into the idea of eating like five small meals instead of three big ones? Yeah, I definitely advocate that because there's a few reasons. One, the thermic effect of feeding, which is basically the calories you have to burn just moving that food through your body. And the other thing is that it doesn't allow your blood sugar level to completely drop so that when it tanks and it's super low, that's when most people tend to binge. Can uh, you lose weight at any age or the older you are, the harder it is? So the older you are, the more challenging it becomes because a lot of people as they age start moving less. They see decrease in muscle mass, which is why resistance exercise is so important for maintaining that because that is the single most factor that impacts your metabolism. And how does uh, stress work in in the uh, way of your body not being able to lose weight or gain it? Well, stress can impact the body many ways. Some people look at cortisol and fat storage, but it impacts your ability to sleep. Sometimes it impacts your food choices. So, you know you really got to have some tools in your toolbox to manage it. So exercise is important for minimizing that. Trying to get a good night's sleep is really imperative. And sleep should really be the sixth vital sign. <laughs> you know, we look at, um, you know, exercise being the fifth vital sign. I think sleep is very important. Um, you know, not, not avoiding any food groups not having absolute rules, not depriving yourself of anything can be a big problem. Um, making sure that you're taking adequate supplementation, especially as you're aging. Um, we sometimes have challenges with absorbing nutrients, and we hear a lot about vitamin D being important, probiotics being important, and something else for those who have a hard time with their relationship with carbs, uh, consider taking a carb blocker like phase two about a half hour before they eat so that they can eat and enjoy that bowl of pasta. Because let's face it, most people just don't want to eat one cup, which is two servings. Well, that's right. <laughs> yeah, really. I got a big plate. Okay. And, and the cool thing is, is that uh, phase two is a white kidney bean extract that helps to inhibit the absorption of starchy carbohydrates. And people who have used it have have um, minimized their absorption by up to 65%. Wow, we've heard about and that. And helps to lose weight. Yeah, that, that, that has been brought up on the show before, that product. Um, I want to ask you something about the title. The title is Liv yeah. Living Skinny and Fat Genes, and genes is spelled G-E-N-E-S, so we're talking yeah. about genetics. So I wanted to ask you to talk to the listeners who believe, or maybe it's true, not that they're believing in it, it's not true, but that they are heavy because of their genetics. And what it sounds like you're saying is that in spite of your genetics, you will be able to get to the weight you want if you follow a certain regimen. Is that right? Well, basically, your genes don't determine your total outcome. So the environment is an integral part of that completely. So it's about your food and physical activity choices, stress management, and sleep. Those are all an important part of, you know, whether or not you're going to be overweight or not. 
Uh, you know, because obesity didn't exist a hundred years ago the way it does now. I know. You know, what? we we heard the story just the other day about these guys reenacting the Civil War or making a movie or something like that, and they had to get costumes, so they went to this costume place that had authentic Civil War costumes, and they couldn't fit into them. These guys were, <laughs> and they weren't fat. It's just that back in the Civil War, everybody was really skinny. Yeah. 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 Well, if you look at traditional art, you know, you go to museums and you look at paintings from hundreds of years ago, most people were lean and wealthy people were the obese people because that was a sign of of being able to have extra and excess food. Yeah. Oh, that's right. Well, I notice when I have no money, I get thinner. <laughs> I notice this happens. Yes. Uh, uh, and this is the time of year when people start getting a little crazy with excuses, you know, from Halloween until, I don't know, like the summer, till 4th of July. There's so many reasons to eat, so many holidays and excuses to eat. Right, right, right. So it's about managing your relationship with food, trying small amounts of everything, but balancing it out with physical activity and a little bit of just say no. All right, I have a copy of the book. I would like to give it away. If you call me, I will give it to you. It's called Living Skinny in Fat Jeans. It's written by our guest, Dr. Felicia Stoller. Uh, one person will get it. The rest of us have to go buy it, and uh, that includes me. Uh, doctor, let's start with uh, websites. Do you have a website to recommend? Yes, FeliciaStoller.com, and I'm on all social media under my name, Felicia Stoller. Okay, excellent. Let me uh, answer the phone and give this one away. Good morning. You've got the book. Who's this? Yes, Larry, this is Judy. Judy, you've got it. It'll be waiting for you here, okay? Thank you much. You're, wel you're welcome. Uh, Dr. Stoller, thank you for what you're doing. I think a lot of people are going to benefit from this information. Thank you so much. Have an awesome day. Thank you. You too. We will be right back. The weather is brought to you by MyFWC.com. Safe boating is no accident. On this Friday, clouds and some sunshine. It'll be breezy with a passing shower. A high temperature today between 81 and 85, and Friday night partly cloudy, those in the low to mid-60s, inland 73 on the coast. A breezy day Saturday with some sunshine, high 82 to 86, and on Sunday partly sunny, high again 82 to 86. Watch for rough surf and strong rip currents at the beaches into the weekend. From the Florida weather.